Good day, boys and girls. Welcome to online Sunday school with me, Colin. We realise Sunday schools are back on again at churches. If you're watching, we especially say thank you. We intend to keep this going for a little while yet. And we're going to start talking about the miracles of Jesus and the parables of Jesus. So these are from God's Word, the Bible, and they're always relevant, they're always updated. We'll sing a couple of songs, we'll do a Bible verse, and of course we'll bring the Bible lesson to you as well. So we're going to sing, and we're going to pray, and we're going to look at a Bible story, and it's all going to be within a short time as well. Welcome to Online uh, Sunday School. Let's sing a lovely song. I think you know it. You take all the pieces of my life. song you forgive me let's pray because forgiveness is a central theme of the bible and god's message when god wanted to reconcile man to god by sending the lord jesus into the world to lay down his life on the cross why was that so we can be forgiven father we just thank you for sunday school for another opportunity where children can learn from the bible and pray lord you'll bless the boys and girls give us an appetite to learn more about you and help us to practice forgiveness, Lord. And may we be forgiven today by calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus and ask him to forgive us, to save us from all our sin. In your name we pray. Amen. We're going to learn a Bible verse today. And it's called, I am the resurrection and the life. Quite often, many times, at least seven times, the Lord Jesus said, I am I am the great shepherd, I am the door, I am the light of the world. But here he says, I am the resurrection and the life. And of course, speaking about the time when he would die on the cross, he said he would be buried in the tomb and he would rise again from the day, proving which he did do, of course, proving to be the son of God. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Um, resurrection and the life what type of life is he talking about he's talking about eternal life he's talking about everlasting life so jesus said i am the resurrection and the life can you say that 
I am the resurrection and the life. It's good to try and memorize these verses. They'll help you along the way whenever you doubt life, whenever you doubt what happens after life. Remember, Jesus came to give us life, to give it more abundantly, to give us everlasting life, to give us eternal life for, for with him forever and ever in heaven for millions and billions of years and eternity. We can be alive forever with him. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. Any other person who's died has not been resurrected. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection. No other God or king or queen or anyone can say they are the resurrection. Proven to be the son of God. Jesus said, I am. And it came true because he's, he did resurrect from the dead. Whenever he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Found in John's gospel, of course. Let's sing another song, a lovely song, as we think before we bring our story today. Through every storm of life, I know you're by my side, so I am holding on. Through your promises, you are the God who holds my future and my dreams, so I am holding on. you never let go of me. You Sing a brand new song, you open up my eyes to see. We rescued me, rescued me. You showed the way when there was no way out. You looked my man when you were raised all down. You made me strong when I was weak. You rescued me. Wonderful song. I really, really enjoy that song. We're going to speak today about a little sick girl. One of the miracles, of course, whenever we think about the Lord Jesus and who he came to heal. I wonder, have you ever been sick as a child? It's amazing how many children, people, when they look back upon their life, there's a time when they weren't well, they had an accident, they maybe fell off their bike, they maybe broke something, or they were just unwell, and of course, mommy came to rescue, and sometimes we had to go to the doctor, we had to get medication, or sometimes if we break something, we have to stay overnight in hospital. Well, this story today in the Bible talks about a little girl. We, she was 12 years old. We don't know how, uh, what her name was. But we do know there was a man who was a father called Jarius. And Jarius was a religious leader. And he came running up to Jesus saying, ask him for help. 
Now, for a religious leader to do that, it could be embarrassing because people say, why is that religious man asking Jesus for help? And it could be embarrassing for him, but he did not care because his little child was sick at the point of death, which means she was dying. She was going to die unless she got help. So he did not care what people thought. And that's a lesson today. Many people don't become Christians, don't come to the Lord Jesus, don't put their trust in him, ask him for forgiveness or salvation because of what others might think. So it's the number one lesson we want to think about Jairus. He did not care what other people thought about him whenever he came running to Jesus because his need was personal. It was his, his time which needed healing. So when, if you're not a Christian and you think, I'd love to be a Christian, but my family maybe don't want me to be or my friends will laugh at me, don't care about your friends. If you know you need to be saved, you're conscious of your sin, well, you ask the Lord Jesus right now to forgive you, to save you, and start walking your life with God. So whenever we think of hospital, you can maybe rely or relate to, maybe this here, you have to get an injection, you're in hospital bed, or mommy's going to test your temperature, and you just don't feel up to it, you need to take a day off school. We've all been here, we've all had bad days, and because of human nature, the way the body is, it's very seldom you go right through life without having a bad day when you just don't feel yourself. And of course, that's a good time to learn to pray, to talk to God, to ask him to heal you, to help you, and to give your health back. Whether you're a little girl or a teenager or an adult, we can all have, have sore heads or sore tummies, maybe food upset us, maybe someone's upset us, and we just don't feel normal today. Well, this little girl in our story today uh, was one of those days, but I just think it was one morning she woke up, I think it was going on for a little while, and she realized that the doctors can't help her, the nurses can't help her, many cases can't help her, there's only one person can help her and can heal her. And of course, that was the Lord Jesus. And the Lord, people can help you today. They can do many things for you. But the only person who can save someone from their sin is the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jarius comes right up to the Lord Jesus. And he goes down on his knees with respect to God. Respect to the Lord Jesus Christ. And says, good master. And he said, I want you to come and help me. Because my daughter is very sick. And whenever Jesus, lots of people will be asking or shouting or requesting the attention of the Lord Jesus. But whenever Jairus spoke to him, Jesus knew by his tone of voice, by the way he looked at him, of course, he knew his heart. He knew he was coming before he came. And he says, Jairus, we need to go to your house immediately, right away. And he started walking and Jairus, as quickly as he could, Jesus following behind. But in the meantime... Why Jesus is walking through the crowds of people, the Bible says there's another woman and she has been bleeding for 12 years. Do you ever cut your finger and you're bleeding and you think it's never going to stop? And after a couple of minutes, of course, it's stopped. You forget all about it. Well, this woman has been bleeding continually for 12 years. The Bible says she spent all her money on doctors and medicine trying to heal her, trying to help her. None of it can make any difference. And she also realized the only person who can help her is the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible says she came up behind him and she touched the hem of his garment or she touched the back of his coat. And Jesus immediately stopped and he said, who touched me? And the disciples said, Lord, what do you mean who touched you? Everyone's touching him. You're rubbing shoulders with everyone as you walk past. He said, no, someone has deliberately touched me. How do you know that? He says, because virtue, healing power has gone out of me. And this woman realized that she was the focus of attention. She came up and she said, good master, Lord, it was me. I touched him. Jesus didn't rebuke her. He didn't tell her off. He says, daughter, your faith has made you whole. It wasn't faith and because she touched the coat of Jesus. So many, some people think because of a picture of Jesus in her home or on the cross or on your neck, it's enough to merit or inherit salvation. It doesn't make any difference. Jesus said, your faith, that meant she knew because if she came to Jesus, it was enough for Jesus 
to save her. And that's what we need to say. We need to have faith, believing if we come to the Lord Jesus, he will heal us. He will save us from our sin. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to him by faith, believing. When you come to him, he will heal you and he will save you. In the meantime, somebody shouted, Jarius, don't bother Jesus anymore. He said, why not? He says, it's too late. What do you mean it's too late? He says, your little girl has just passed away. You can imagine Jarius, how he felt when he's told his little girl had just died. And as his heart began to fail and eyes began to water, Jesus looked at him and Jarius and said, Jarius, only believe. Two words, only believe. And for some reason, he thought, why did Jesus say only believe? Whenever the Lord Jesus spoke those two words, it was enough to bring comfort to Jarius. And off they went. And of course, whenever they got outside the home, lots of people had gathered. They were crying. They were mourning. That's often what happened whenever somebody died. Hired mourners would come and wail and make lots of noise. And whenever Jesus said, why are you crying? They said, the little girl has died. And Jesus said, she's not dead, but she's sleeping. And they all began to laugh at Jesus and make fun of him. And today people still laugh at Jesus. They still make fun of him. They certainly don't respect him. And Jesus said, could everyone come out of the home apart from their father and mother? And a couple of disciples went in and there was a little girl and she had died. She was on her bed dead. Jesus simply took her by the hand and said, damsel or little girl arise. And the moment with the authority, with the power of his voice, when the moment Jesus spoke, the little girl immediately sat up. She woke up, she sat up, and she spoke up. She said, Mommy, I'm hungry. Because the Lord Jesus ordered the mother and said, Please get your little girl some food because she's hungry. Can you imagine the rejoicing of Jarius and the little girl's mother when they lost everything in this world and suddenly... By the power of the Lord Jesus, he brought her back to life again. Whenever Jesus spoke, she woke up, she sat up, and she spoke up. Then she ate up the food that the mother made. And I thought about that. Whenever Jesus speaks to us, he calls us to salvation. That means we waken up out of our sin. And we realize we're sinners before God. We call upon his name, he saves us. And then we want to sit up and realize we're no longer owned. We're bought with the price of the precious blood of the Lord Jesus. We become a child of the living God. Then we want to eat up. That's not physical food. Jesus gave her an appetite whenever he saved her because he said she's hungry. When you become a Christian, you get hungry for God by learning about him, by living for him, by reaching others for him and shining for him. And I thought, what a lovely story from the Bible. God's word of a little girl who was dead and Jesus spoke the words and she came right back to life again. I thought, what a lovely challenge. What a lovely story. Jesus has a special love for little children. And he says to adults, except you become like little children. He said, in other words, become like them and simply and simple, childlike faith, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Lovely story today. We're going to finish with a song. I'm trusting you. I want to face this world with wonder and excitement. Face it. 
trusting you God you are good that's all for Sunday school today thanks for watching let's pray father thank you so much for Sunday school thank you for these beautiful stories in the Bible how you love the little children how you love the adults and you wanted to save them you wanted to heal them and you wanted them to follow you all the days of their lives give us the courage to do the same for we ask in Christ's name amen thanks for watching and we'll see you next time yeah, 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 yeah.